tic, tac, toe, who hasn't played this endlessly at times when you have nothing else around but a pen and a small piece of paper, or a stick to play at writing in the sand. This time and back to basic, Al will build his game in a few Commodore basic lines of code. The challenge here is always not to look for solutions that are out there, but to look at the problem as if it were the first time, I heard of it. Let's have a look at the game itself first, and write down which parts in the program we need. So determine, what elements do we have and create code for in the basic program. So I think we need to find a solution for the following four parts. 1. A playfield. 2. Keeping track on player movements the positions. 3. Ability to input the player movements. 4. A way to determine win or lose. Let's start by looking at all possible solutions of the game. Luckily, those are limited so let's just write them down. The game will end when one of the two players has three in a row. We can divide the playing field into nine cells of the matrix. By numbering these cells, we can write down the winning combinations. We can use these later in our basic program to determine whether a player has won or lost. Finding the winning combinations. If we look at the cells in the matrix let us determine the winning combinations. For example, we have 1, 2 and 3 as a solution, but also 1, 4, 7. This way we can collect all possible combinations. For placing the playing field on the screen, I will take A the standard Petsky characters to form a matrix. The vertices and the intermediate lines will form the complete matrix. Another component in the program that we need is a way to give the user the ability to choose a cell in the matrix, with the cursor keys to move and then place an O or an X in the selected cell of the matrix. We can do this by reading the keyboard with the P command. Important to know is that, the left and up cursor is a combination of shift key and right and bottom cursor key. We will have to read both the cursor key and the shift key for left and right to determine if that is pressed. First look at the code to place the player field on the screen. The poke 214 and poke 211 combination is used to set the X and Y position for the next print command. Then we need some code to read the key input. For this we use peak 203 and peak 653. The first is the key input and the second is to validate if the shift key is also pressed. We need to validate if shift is pressed to know if the cursor left or cursor up key is used. With this part of the code, we validate if the key pressed is X, or if, the key pressed is an O. The second function of this part of the code is to display which user is next to press a key. After we determine which key is pressed we place it on the correct cell position in the playfield we have defined before. Note that in the previous step we also converted the key value into a poke screen value because those values differ. Now we have the input and placed it on the screen we need to validate if that was a winning position for one of the players. We do that by jumping to the validation part of code by using a go sub. After a go sub we can return to the main loop and continue the game. In the validation part, you can find the winning combination we have written down when we were analyzing the tic-tac-toe game. So what we do here is just validating if we can find the three in a row. If we find one we jump to the end part of the game. In the second part of this validation, we also validate if all positions are taken, and no winning pattern is found. Then we also stop the game, and then we display that there was no winner. If there are still cells empty and no winning pattern is found, we return to the main loop of the program and the next user can continue. That all there is, to create the basic program for this game. So let's play. <laughs>